and uh, you guys have to click some button usually to clear the screen. It should say OK or got it, something like that. And then let's do some Tai Chi. Okay, so uh, sitting at the front edge of your uh, chair. Cultivating your Jong Jung or central upright, hands rested, somewhere comfortable. You want a feeling of, again, this term Chun Wan. Chun Wan meaning sinking, a sunken uh, quality, but that doesn't mean we start to slouch and deflate. So there's this uprightness and then this release and allowing of heaviness with the idea that through practice that heaviness sort of you could say washes out of the body the idea that right now all of us are holding consciously subconsciously or often unconsciously we're holding in our body in ways that we in a perfect world perfect state we wouldn't be we'd actually be uh, just sort of like liberated, free, uh, and so that's that releasing and chun wan quality, but that also shows up in the state of, let's say, the shoulders or the elbows when you're sitting here, they should be sunken, but again, not pulled down, but allowed to sink, and then what happens when you do that is that there's a buoyancy that you get from that, so just finding this, this feeling here of, okay, I've got uprightness, and then I'm releasing, just relaxing throughout the body. You just become a master of that relationship. It's very subtle, but incredibly powerful when you can direct your E, your E, the word Y-I is how we spell it, Y-I, but pronounced E, like the letter E, it means your intent, your intent. But my teacher likes to say, instead of intent, think of it as attent, attent, like attention. So your ability to attend to something. Because sometimes intent has this sort of tight quality or this forced quality to it. So I like that discernment. But so attending to your breathing, which helps. Attending to every sensation throughout the body. So eyes closed is useful in the sense that we take away external distraction. We start to be able to see, hear, feel, sense more of the layers of activity going on within. And then when we can influence it in the direction of soft, relaxed, Loose, easy. So let's just take, again, on your own, this could be your entire practice in a day where you just do this a couple of times for five minutes, ten minutes. If you want to do long, longer sits, you know, in, in sort of uh, formal settings, they'll sit for an hour, two hours. In the Zen tradition, you'll go and do seven days of just just sitting uh, with breaks obviously in between but so there's a lot to be explored in this sitting practice but for our purpose just use it to reclaim awareness of the whole vehicle the whole body the brain through the electrical conduits of the nervous system out to all of the organs and endocrine glands which operate more on the sub, uh, the uh, automatic system, right? We have the automatic running aspect of our being, and then we have the volitional thing that we can choose to do. So the brain is controlling both of those aspects. We're just witnessing that, connecting to that. The breath is interesting because it's the one function that is both automatic and volitional. 
So by you using your E, your attention, to interface with the breath and move the breath into that longer, smoother, more thorough quality, now you're starting to influence heart rate, nervous system state, which influences the endocrine glands and the organs function. So we're improving all these layers of function just by taking some time out to tune brain body mind body. And then we use our movement just to clean out where we are stuck. So let's begin sliding those hands back, elbows back, shoulder blades back, arch. Uh, then slide hands forward and round and just be on your own pace. When you learn, once you learn sort of the formal exercises of what we're doing, uh, the real fun part begins because then you start to find you can just go at your own pace. You don't have to keep up with me. You don't have to try to keep up with any kind of idea of repetitions. It's just literally taking care of yourself. And back to neutral, and into your rotations, left hand forward, right hand back, twist, and then switch and twist. Couple more. And then back to middle. Arms hang, side lean. Lift your left wrist, left foot, droop, and then switch. Just loose and easy again, making any little changes. Whenever I'm doing any of these exercises, I'm always adding little, you know, my foot circle, I shake out my leg, a little shoulder movement. All of that is not something that can be micromanaged by someone other than myself, right? And that's true for you too. You have to be hearing your body, listening to your neck, your shoulder, find those little places that need the extra attention, need the little micro adjustment uh, in terms of how long do you hold, when do you move, all of that is personal. And then back to the middle. Shoulders, we go forward, up, over the top, back, down, under, forward, up. And I find <clears throat> these exercises can be, again, the more you practice them, the better you get at them, the more you can really find those specific spots for yourself. I find I can't even really go to massages and enjoy them as much because they just, they pale in comparison to how deep we can get in terms of, you know, I'm massaging my own shoulders and then massaging all my back muscles and loosening up these barnacles 
from the inside out. And then go ahead and reverse. Back and up, over, forward and down. So the potential for joint mobilization work is quite high in terms of how much benefit you can produce for yourself, but it has to be a regular thing. So that's where I hope you guys are finding time regularly throughout your day, not even just once, you know, maybe once in the morning, once at night, just to keep the flow going. Just like we brush our teeth in the morning, brush them at night as well, or else, right? I'd, I'd say the same thing applies to our body. And Let's go right shoulder forward up. As it goes back and down, left shoulder forward up. Back and down, right shoulder forward up. And so we're getting this roll here. Reverse. And legs together, tip a little bit forward, right? So leaning a little bit forward. Bring your arms forward, but not up. And we go out, lean a little bit back, bring the arms in, forward, out, in. And then go forward and lift, out, down. Notice that there's all this room in front, but not as much when we go back behind. I'm not going very far, if at all, behind the body. So I'm not cranking back this way, just right in that little space. Then we got all this room, but then only a little bit back here. And then we go finally forward and up and keep going up, 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 up. And same idea, not too far behind, just right down that line there. So the saying in Taoist practice is the front closes and opens, the back never closes. So all that happens is when the front closes, the back is just more open. But even when the front opens, the back stays open. Reverse, we go low again. Out, around to the front, and then back, and around, and back, and around. And then it's back and up, forward. Front opens, back stays feeling open, and then front closes, back opens more. And then up and over the top here, so it's open. Lift, keep lifting. Oh. Open, stay open while lifting, close, stay close, <clears throat> open, close, and down, bend the elbows, elbows flare out, and up, down, in. Down, out, up. And. 
elbows back, down, forward, up, forward, down, back, down, forward, up. In, elbows out, hug, open, switch, hug, open, hug, open. open. Elbows down. Arms out in front, palms facing up, and then palms facing down. Palms facing up, down, up, down. Palms facing up, hands go out, opening and unfolding. Then hands come in, elbows go out and around towards the front. So look where the elbows are in relationship to my body now. They're forward, so that creates this little hollowing of the front. Elbows in, hands out. That creates this unfolding, opening, external rotation. And then... Stay open, step wide. Left hand up, all the way over, and palm. And then up, back. Turn the palms down, let them fall through the legs, and separate. Folded and closed, right? Here. Then cross, lift, opening, unfolding, closing, folding. So it's cross, down, separate. Cross, lift, open. One more. And step back to hip distance. Bring arms close together. Hands and wrists. Fold through. As the hands come up, they got to rotate palms up so they can go through again. Rotate so they can go through again. Forward. Over top. Now add to that this little, the rest of the hand, the fingers. So as you bend the wrist, monkey paw, monkey paw, roll through, and then open, roll, monkey paw. So it gets into all these spaces, in and out. Reverse, under, over, rotate, under, <clears throat> over, under. Now add that monkey paw where it's the fingers and the wrist, roll, and then out, and then turn, roll. Spread, 
gather, spread, gather. So what we add to that, as the fingers fan open, spiral the hands under, and then as they come over top, close. So there's this spiral and spiral, spiral, fingers open. So Marjan, notice how my palms are facing forward. They're not facing up and down, forward, like this. And then here, my palms are facing forward, not down, but forward. So the whole way, it's as if there's a, a ball, a sphere, that my hands are coming around the back side of, like that. Now, spread and reach, tiger claw into a fist, turn the arms, palm up, and draw in. And then relax the hands, float them up and out. As they're going out, spread the fingers. At the end, clasp, turn, Draw, okay? Relax the hands. Now we're gonna go uh, uh, feet stepped a little bit wide, lean a little bit towards your right leg and reach towards this forward corner in your room. Up, full reach, claw, clasp, and then shift and pull towards the other buttocks, sort of like drawing down and then relax. So we go reaching, claw into a fist, arms turn, and draw. So the whole body is involved in this reach and this draw. One more to this corner. Class, draw. Now other corner, <clears throat> loose, reach, clasp, and draw. Float, reach, clasp, draw. Reach, clasp, draw. One more. And shake, loose. Bird beak, thumb touch pinky, three fingers touch, bend, back, bend, back. Thumb touch pinky, other three fingers touch, wrist, and then spread. Bird beak, wrist, spread. Monkey paw, pinky ring middle, and then this like a uh, uh, like chopsticks, bend, and then open. Pinky ring middle, chopsticks, bend. So that one is is this sort of. So you want it to go one two three four, bah, and then release in reverse sequence. And shake. Scoot back on the chair. Load your right leg up, heel drawn in, and then push. <clears throat> load down. Other leg. Load. Push. Down. Switch. Load. Push. Foot and ankle range of motion. Straight leg, point, flex. <clears throat> Tilt the foot a little in, out. Invert, evert. And circles, in, around, and out.
out, around, and in. Reverse circle. And switch feet. Point and flex. Invert, evert. Tilt the foot a little in, out, in, out, in, out. Circle. In, around, and out. Out, around, and in. Scoot forward. Front edge of your chair, legs together. We go right leg, lift the toe. So we turn knee and toe out, then heel out, knee in. Toe out, knee out. This leg is really the only main mover. Heel out, knee in, and out. And then walk it back in. One, two, three, four. Back, do it again. One, two, three, four. Hold. One, two, three, four, and back. Other leg. Toe out, knee out. Heel out, knee in. Toe out, knee out. Heel out, knee in. One more. Toe out, knee out. And then one, two. Five, do it again. One, two, three, four, hold, in. And both legs, one, two, and three. And then bring them in. One, two, three. And back out. One, two, One, two, three. Step feet about hip distance. Sit up tall, hands on thighs, hip hinge, bowing forward. And as you do that, turn on the hands, turn your elbows out and around, and really open the back. And then sit upright, arms turn to neutral, lean back from the hips. Tip forward, turning on the hands, elbows flare out. And sit upright, leaning back. Okay. And step wide from the hips, arms again turned. Just the dragon taking a bow. Back again. All of these are like dental floss. Again, our teeth are not as complicated. They don't have as many different spaces that need to be flossed and cleaned as the rest of the body. But it's the exact same idea that we're trying to Create these shapes that find those little barnacles and stuck areas. Now let's do the dragon stirs the sea. So you're leaning back and you tip. As you bow to the right, elbows flare out. You come across, bringing out the shoulders, moving through the hips, rolling the vertebra of the spine around. Prime mover is pelvis, but the whole spinal column including the head and neck, can get this really nice rolling, sort of unwinding. Same idea again. We're just like finding plaque in these areas of the body that we just want to keep away. Let's go ahead and reverse. And I mentioned before, but the, the metaphor of the teeth is very valuable because plaque is something that we always have, but if we just keep our, <laughs> we floss regularly, we clean, we keep plaque at bay, no problem. 
but the real problem becomes if there's an area where it gets the plaque gets to sit there for a while and it becomes tartar. And then that's a whole other problem, right? So we want to get to the point where our practice is just like our daily flossing. We're just keeping all of that accumulation at bay rather than having these areas where it's built up and gets really stuck. So that's, once again, the importance of regular practice, especially if you have sort of a backlog of issues. you got to pick away at that for a while until you can get to the place where your daily practice feels like it's just upkeep and maintenance. Bring the legs back together, arms hang by your side. We wing, turn the palms up, reach up. Now chest up, chin up a little bit, straight arms. Now reach your right arm higher. And then just relax that. Then left arm. So what leads this exercise is this hand's fingers trying to touch something a little higher. And then the body will kind of do a little bit of a side lean. There will be little changes, but I'm not doing those changes. All I'm doing is being relaxed and yet thorough. Relaxed, but thorough. And both arms at the same time, reach, 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 and then float those wings out, down, and down. Now, arms forward, keep the forward and long direction as you go forward and up, forward and up, forward and up, and then let this become a back bend, arching. And forward and down. And let's do that one one more time. Forward and up. Stay long through the fingertips. Forward and up. Forward and up. Forward and long. And let it turn into an arching back then. Spinal extension. And then down. Release, <clears throat> head and neck, chin down, forward, up, forward, down. Do this a few times. You want to polish this pathway so there's no impediment. No impediment. Free movement. And then bring your head to level. Turn. Middle. Turn. Middle. Turn. Just keep doing that. Not rushing, feel free to linger at your edges. Back to middle. Now this kind of Funny one, chin forward. So go into as much of this bad position, this position that a lot of people's head and neck migrate towards as we age, and be able to retract from that, retract from that, keeping the chin. Don't lift the chin here, take the head back without lifting. And so then that opens this whole region, base of skull. Forward, back, forward, back, 
One more. Four. There. And this should help you now find middle. Middle, tip to the side. Now notice when I tip to the side, there is no rotation. Side, middle, side. Middle, side. So we're really getting that length. Middle, side. So now we've gone, hopefully we've gotten some, some space on this lateral movement. Now come back to middle, go the smallest amount to your right, chin up. Chin up, which sends your head back. Then keeping the chin up, go that small amount to the left. So you tip, and then chin down, head comes forward. And then roll. So now we're doing a circle, but start small. And then let the next one be a little larger. And then a little larger. And remember not to let it become a turning of the head, right? Because it's sort of an optical illusion. People start doing this, right? Notice that I'm not doing that. I'm doing that. So my nose essentially stays centered throughout. So the head is rolled. And then start getting a little larger. And if you're hearing little crickles and crackles and sand and grit, that means you're on the right track. You can think of all that sand and grit in there as impediment to juice, impediment to flow. And then as you stay relaxed and gently, but persistently get these mechanics moving, you start to promote the juice into those areas. Now let your head hang in front. So when doing this, we pause here, hanging in front, then bring the head back up to the middle, and then we switch directions. The way I always remember it is I always go back first. So I'm going to one side and then I go back to start and come around and then forward and then around and back because it's easy to, easy to forget which direction you just went so you find your own way to remember that but we start small and then get a little larger and then a little larger and the idea with that getting larger, larger, larger is also part of the spiral concept that is true at the connective tissue level. The body is wrapped in sort of a spiraling casing. As well, the Taoists understand that there's spiral infrastructure. And so it's kind of like, at least poetically, they would say you're feeding chi into the spiral infrastructure that underlies our material body, the spiral sort of energetic infrastructure. Last couple at your maximum, whatever that is today, this roll. And on this last one, you let your head come all the way around and hang in front for a moment. And then bring the head up to level. And let's just take a moment. Sometimes that can produce lightheadedness. A lot of times it's because nerve plexes are being sort of pinched. And then as you loosen it up, there's just more flow to the area. So let everything settle. And then let's stand up and sit down. So try to feel loose. Try to feel light. 
Try to just stay relaxed. Slide your feet a little bit underneath you. <clears throat> Remember this idea of Chung Wan being uh, let that which can sink, let it sink. So usually when we start to stand up, we start thinking, okay, well, I got to work now, but that's not helping really. We stay relaxed, pour out of the chair, and let everything that can stay down below you and underneath you, just let it stay there. So that all that comes up is this chingling, light, nimble, relaxed body, and then that relaxed body has less of a problem or no problem, just folding into this shape, which this shape gets me down to my chair. But the weight, the groundedness stays in the ground, whether it's through the chair or now the groundedness is through my feet. And I'm all the way up. And let's add to this when we come up. Let's add this push hips forward a little, just as much of this arch as you can. Don't force it and put yourself at risk or jam your back. But just notice, yeah, the body can do this. Hips forward. And then hips back. And sink. <clears throat> Sit. One more time. Just pour the weight out. So not leaving the ground. Everything stays in the ground, whether lying down, sitting down, or standing. Standing is the hard time because we tend to go, okay, I'm afraid of the ground. I better get ready. But all that does is make us more clumsy, more awkward. So let it stay relaxed. Now, without sitting, let's do this hips forward and arch. And then this Tai Chi squat where you just sink and pull down, almost like going into the fetal position while standing. And then coming all the way up and hips forward and arch. So we're promoting freedom of movement. All the joints and tissues being loose, willing to glide and slide with each other. One more. <clears throat> and standing right in the middle, nice and easy. And rising hands, floating up, a little switch, sweeping down. Let's add to this, this rising and sinking. So as the hands come up, you can kind of straighten the legs, float up, float up. And then as this sinks down, just let the knees have that openness, that buoyancy to sink a little bit. doesn't mean we're squatting. We're just allowing for... This natural rise and sink, and yet the groundedness doesn't change. That's what you want to feel is that whether I'm here or here, I'm still very connected down through the ground because of the open, spacious quality through the bottom. Now scoop in front, open. Same idea, we're just allowing for this little bit of a rising quality buoyancy known as pung, and then that sinking quality known as on fire, the, the expression how fire is always rising, and water is always by its nature settling. Letting our body be able to express that. Now, wings and right hand over, left hand under. As the hands come together, there's that little sink. Rise. And sink. Rise. Sinking with consolidating sort of settling to the middle and then there's this expression this manifesting this going on a big round trip and then consolidating back to the middle one more and 
scooping hands in front elbows back, turn palms forward and push. So we've got this, and then we've got this. So reach. And notice how when I reached further, I didn't get pulled along with it. In some ways, my back went back. So try to get that feeling of full reach hands forward so that you should feel opening along the whole back side of the body. Right? And then bring it in here. And then so we don't just stop there, we go for that extra bit of opening all those back channels. Back. One more. Back, and then left hand push. Let this have that little turn, turn of the pivot. And then turn left hand to face body, right hand face away. Hands change and one draw, one push. One draw, one push. This is the repel the monkey. One draw, one push. Now, scoop, turn. So now the pinky edge leads forward. This comes back so that they pass by each other. Back. And then scoop and rise and then press out through the pinky edge. And then scoop, rise. It's called changing palm. And just notice how that little change of the edge of the palm and where they are related to the body, it changes the shen fa or the mechanism effect, how it affects the mechanisms in your body. It's these little changes. And both hands back. Settle. Release. Now we've got two legs. Change the weight to the right leg, turn from your middle pivot, and sweep over. Left leg being empty, then you change, turn, brush, sweep. Start small, but let it grow organically. So each one of these should feel unique in the sense that you're letting the tissue and joints and barnacles and stuck spots be affected positively by these movements. And as that continues, it starts to become the bear swirls the stream. So that hand travels away, comes in close, away, comes in close. Naturally becomes the bear, squats the low jumping. Fish. The hand wants to travel up. So when you practice these on your own, which I highly suggest you do, you can explore. So it is not about following the sequence necessarily to the T. Karen, remember your, uh, your brush knee hand? You're sort of letting it get stuck here and coming like that. Remember, it's sweeping through. So it's coming through and this is coming through. And then this is coming down, and it's down in the water, and it's moving through. So don't let it get stuck, right? Flow through. So again, these expressions of energy in the body have this beneficial impact on the tissues and joints. Now, Brush knee and push. So stay in your left leg. Wing roll fold. So we're all loaded up. Shift turn brush. Push. Let him go, 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 go. 
Left hand dips into the water, right hand roll fold. Now we're coming, shift and turn and brush and push and let it flow through to the fingertips. And then down, continue. So again, we have our middle, and here we're coming across, coming across, coming across. Now the middle stays kind of where it is, but it's this pliability, like we did with our push exercise, where we were letting it go, and then it returns. Because the state that we want with the body is like warmed taffy. So I could stay stiff and, of course, do this, but what I want to do is really feel how, oh yeah, it's about letting it reach to that end while keeping my middle and then letting it return to this loaded position. And then from that loaded position, expressing, getting all the way, and then returning, shifting and turning and brushing and pushing and letting it continue, 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 and then return. Pushing through, through, through. Gail, yeah, don't let that uh, pushing hand drop. The last time you let this hand go down like that, instead of keep it here, and it pushes. Yeah, there. And then your bottom hand also goes like brush and keeps going. So it doesn't go behind you. It goes brush, keeps going. And then they exchange places. And now it's brush on bottom, push on top. They keep going. And then return. So we're cultivating a middle that is totally able to use all the space and all the mechanisms that are available. Now, stay in your right leg. Take your left foot a little bit behind. Toes turned out five degrees. Shift the weight into that back leg, left hand dip down here, right elbow bent, fingers pointing to the sky, right foot empty, touching the floor, golden rooster, all right? Now bring that foot back, change the weight to the right leg, right hand down, left elbow bend, left foot in front. And foot comes back, nothing changes. Shift, everything changes. Foot comes back, nothing changes. Everything changes. Now let's add that challenge. If you're comfortable, disconnect the foot from the floor a little bit, right? Possibly all the way. Then you bring it down. Shift. Foot empty, then you can lift it to a certain point safely. Please be safe. Chain. Rooster stands on one leg, comes down without any weight in it. The hardest part, in many ways, is the putting of the foot back down without falling into it. It's this setting down of the empty leg. Then this internal mechanism change. Wow. And watch your pause. Right into our hands, play with clouds. So sweep right hand, vapor up, shift, turn, cloud, lake, vapor, rain. So as we're doing, for most of you, if not all, I think all of you, what we're doing today is familiar. And so because of that, the beauty of having, you know, not doing a whole bunch of new this is and that, which has its benefit, doing new stuff, but this allows you to find this flow state. It allows, you, it allows you to use this to connect everything. Now let's add, as your left foot is empty, as the hands are changing, bring the left foot in and out without any weight. And then it's shift and turn. As the hands change, 
bring the foot in and back out, shift and turn. Foot comes in, back out, shift and turn. In and out, shift and turn. Now, hold the ball. So you're holding the ball, right hand is low, left hand is high. This hand does flying diagonal, while this hand does down and away. Together, that is stroking wild horses, maybe. All right, so. Turn right palm out, left palm up, embrace the moon, shift and turn, stroke wild horse's mane. So it's that move plus shift, turn. Turn both hands, shift and turn. Gather. Turn both hands. Now stay in your right leg. Sweep the lake with the left hand. Right hand folds over top. Now we've got flying diagonal plus down and away. Eat, uh, plus together plus shift and turn equals stroke wild horses mane. Turn left palm out, right palm up, shift, turn, brace, shift, turn, stroke wild horses, man. turn, shift. Wash your paws. Now, stay in your right leg. Turn your left foot out about five degrees. Shift over onto that leg and bring your hands up right in front of the chest. Step your right foot forward, toes pointing straight ahead. So if you can see the arrangement of my feet, notice I'm not like this. So I'm not standing on one line. There's some width. But just because I've stepped the leg sort of out to the right, I don't turn my foot that way. So that's usually the other mistake people make. So the foot is pointing forward, but there's some left to right width, and it's in front. Now, turn your palms to face forward. We shift 70% into that front leg and push. Full extend. Turn the hands around, and we shift back. Draw. Turn the hands. Push. Full extend. Draw. Now, even though there's this push forward and, and draw back, remember the primary direction is down. So any drawing back, I'm actually taking it down to the earth. And the same thing here, my push, I'm not up here, uprooted, trying to push. It's connecting to the ground, that's the sturdiness that I need to execute a good push. And same thing here, I need to have this sturdy down to the earth thing. Push. Draw. And switch, drop the hands, bring this right foot back, toes turned out, straighten up a little bit. And then we sink down through the right leg Step and draw the hands up, turn the palms forward. 
Now we're shift and push and draw. Push. Teacup still doing all right. Push. This one's really good at helping us get that whole body from feet through every passageway to the hands and the crown to really get that feeling of it's just one fluid body. And back. And then step back. Three times, sink chi, wash organs, rock a little to your heels, open, and lift. Rock to your toes a little, sweep the hands around in front, palms face up. Rock to the heels, hands come in, settle to the middle of the feet, hands settle to the middle, and then we got this little squat. And that's to let go of anything that's left and come up with as little as possible, and we do that twice more. Rock. The other thing this movement does is it just returns us to the idea of sort of the endless river flowing unimpeded. Just washing through, cooling for a moment at the middle, making its way down. Its way back up, flowing again. Close wing, roll full. Seven. Turn the palms to face in. A little bit out in front. Allow this idea of the battery recharging by you doing nothing. Thinking nothing. Emotionally turbulent about nothing. Ideally, right? Easier said than done. But that's the idea that that gobbles up our chi from the battery. So only when we can go clear, empty, like the best night of sleep you ever had was a night where you had zero dreams. You don't even remember. You just woke up and go, huh, right? So that void, that emptiness, seeing that as a place to connect to and get resource from, to be nourished from, and then seal one hand other hand, and then a little hand mudra. Thank you, everybody. If there are any final thoughts or questions, feel free to unmute and share.